Thank you for joining me for another episode of my lunch break. If you're new, welcome. I hope you're all having a great day. And was this guy real? Is the mainstream narrative of insane asylums built to terrify you? Is it here to distract you from what they really are? Are insane asylums here to scare you from the truth? If you had to ask me, I would say yes. Why did insane asylums just start popping up out of nowhere all at the exact same time in the 1800s? Going back to the theory that our new timeline begins around the year 1800, we have another thing that begins in the mid 1800s, insane asylums. Let's move over to New Jersey and see what's going on with the Greystone Park Psychiatric Hospital. Actually, let's call it by its original name, the State Asylum for the Insane at Morristown. This only took five years to build in 1876. It was in use for 132 years after closing in 2008 and being demolished because they needed room for a parking lot. Making sense? I feel like we're at the point where any building with pillars that go up to the second floor and supposedly built in the 1800s needs to have demolition put on hold. We can't be knocking these buildings down. They need to be preserved so that we can all see them if we want to. Just reading that this building was demolished in 2015 is tough to read. This building should still be standing. The architect for this building was Samuel Sloan. And I just want to take a look at this guy's resume. He was supposedly the architect for Delaware County Courthouse and Jail in Pennsylvania. I find that they normally give away other old world buildings when you see the architect's work. Because they can't just say Samuel Sloan drew up one insane asylum and that was it. It's not believable. So they show you other old world buildings if you dig a little. Now, when I search the story on the courthouse, Wikipedia is blank, nothing. This is so interesting. This building is clearly built by the old world, in my opinion. Okay, let's see what else this guy is supposedly designed. The Eastern State Penitentiary. So he's in the business of designing castles as well. Is this a joke? This is literally a castle. It's not a jail, it's a castle, 100%. This thing is massive. It's literally a fortress. Samuel Sloan was born in 1815. This castle was built in 1829. So he was 14 designing castles. At this point, I think we can all agree that Samuel Sloan did not design these structures. In my opinion, this is a complete destruction of the narrative. The entire story is void at this point. How can we trust any of this? that they tell us. It's total nonsense. Are these characters even real? What's on the menu today? Lobotomy, anyone? I had that yesterday. I think I'll go with electric shock therapy. Great, we'll just do that until you forget about the seventh tower. Sound good? All right, I don't know what that was, but let's, uh, let's move on. So the question that's being asked, and it's being asked for good reason, is were these insane asylums put into place for the people that remembered the old world and needed them to keep quiet? It's very possible that is what's going on here. In the 1700s, nobody was in an insane asylum because there weren't any. 1600s, everyone was good. But of course, once 1800 hits, everyone is insane everywhere. By 1880, there's 139 asylums that had been supposedly built, or in my opinion, the building had been found and repurposed. But anyway, they're still using it for these insane asylums. I wanna show you guys this guy. Richard Snowden Andrews, born in 1830 in the District of Columbia. He fought in the Civil War. He was responsible for being the architect for a church. Looks nice. Weston State Hospital, which I'm going to get into. A high school. Nice. Normal. A governor's house. Good. Looks nice. Then what is this? Did he get the blueprints from God? What school did he go to in a few months where he learned how to design this? Out of nowhere, he knows how to design Greco-Roman style buildings? What is going on here? Time to talk about Weston State Hospital. The construction began in 1858 in West Virginia. Snowden began his architectural career in 1857. So this was his first project. And of course, here we go again. If you've seen my last 12 episodes, you will be extremely excited to hear that the prisoners were responsible for the construction. The prisoners. 
The prisoners were just so skilled and superior in the 1800s. Everyone knows this, of course. And here we go. The grounds covered exactly 666 acres. Is anybody shocked about that? I don't think so. People were admitted into this insane asylum for a variety of reasons, including asthma, laziness, egotism, greediness. Are you kidding me? Laziness? Let's really put a pin into this theory and show everyone what is going on here. I mentioned that these buildings are found and repurposed. And are you ready for this? Efforts towards adaptive reuse of the building have included proposals to convert the building into a civil war museum, a hotel, a golf course complex. Can this be any clearer? From this point on, when we say that they find these buildings and repurpose them, this will be referenced as undeniable proof. Denying this would be simply ignoring what's just been seen. Here we go into Elgin, Illinois, and the Northern Illinois Hospital and Asylum for the Insane. The construction of this building is very weird. They began building it in 1870. The building wasn't completed until 1874, so it took four years. They just couldn't wait and opened it up in 1872, two years before it was even completed. Apparently, there were just so many insane people in 1872 in Elgin, Illinois, that they needed to get them off the streets and into this building. And they needed to get it done fast. The city of Elgin promised to provide free freight to the site for building materials. Is this because all of the materials were already there? Imagine the conversation. We just need this insane asylum so bad. We will provide free shipping on all material. And remember, this isn't a little house either. This thing was massive covering 207 acres of land. Prior to 1894, they were denying some people and saying they weren't sick enough. The state of Illinois did not like this at all and changed the law so that everyone could be admitted into the insane asylum. Even if you weren't insane, come on down. In 1983, the governor closed this operation down. And this building sat here for 10 years and was supposedly haunted, probably because they don't want anybody to go check it out. Then, of course, they demolished it in 1993 because of being abandoned. Knock it down so nobody will ask questions. What's weird is that they continued to be operational here at this exact site, even up to this very day, but knocked down the main building. I was able to interview a member of the DuPage County Health Department. DuPage is the county that Elgin is located in. He was able to tell me that the patients were electric shocked in the basement given lobotomies often. Patients were put inside of wooden boxes and basically tortured in this insane asylum. This place was basically a torture house. He said, when you stood outside this building, it had an aura about it. In my personal opinion, I think that we have an additional sense, possibly more than one, that we aren't told about. But I think we can tell that these buildings are special. We know that they have a deeper meaning than what we're told. And once you know that, it explains the aura feeling you get when you look at them. Please comment below if you have something you'd like me to cover in the future. We have a lot of new videos on the way. Also, I wanna say I have a trip coming up to California in a few weeks, a place called Huntington Beach. If there's anything around that area that you guys think I should look at and document and get some boots on the ground footage, let me know in the comments below. I will have some extra time to just explore. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and thank you for joining me today. And I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.